Welcome to Corpse Club, the official podcast of DailyDead.com. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jonathan James, and I'm joined today by Derek Anderson and Scott Trevitt. It's nice to have the both of you here. We've been rotating the uh, the cast for a little bit as we've had different things going on, family commitments, events, and, and and I miss you guys. So I'm happy to have you both here. Happy to be here. It's yeah, it feels like it's been a while, even though I know it hasn't been super long, but it's good to be back. Always up for a hang when available. And you guys have faces that are very nice to see. Yeah, it's great since we've switched to Zoom. It makes it a lot easier than than when we and then the thing too is when you had Skype and you had no video. I mean, I'll admit sometimes I would just be looking somewhere else or I would be like sending a text to Derek on my phone. It's like (laughs) now I can't. Now you'll catch me. (laughs) Oh, we have to pay attention. Yeah, we have to keep each other accountable. We we have to be uh, what do you call it? Uh, Somewhat here, but. <laughs> but no, it's good because this has been, you know, I mean, uh, during the early pandemic, as I always mentioned, this is my lifeline. We got together every week. We caught up. It was the only chance I had to catch up with people. It felt nice and still does. Um, but today we are going to talk about Glorious. We're going to talk about the Popcorn Frights Film Festival. We're going to talk about Sandman and the Resident Evil series on Netflix. We'll talk about it a little bit more. But uh, but yeah, we'll we'll turn it over to Scott because he's seen the uh, new movie Glorious. It's on Shutter. It's directed by Rebecca McKendry. I'm super excited for it, but I haven't had a chance to catch it. But I know you have, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Yes, I literally finished it just a couple hours ago, and uh, truth be told, I found it quite delightful. Um, it's essentially the story of a fella who pulls into a uh, rest stop uh, off of a highway and uh, gets into a conversation with uh, a being through a glory hole uh, in the men's stall. Needless to say, uh, our uh, hero Wes finds that uh, disconcerting. And uh, as the uh, creature or God or being entity, whatever you would like to call it, is voiced by the wonderful J.K. Simmons. Um, And it's essentially a two being show. Uh, I can't say it's a two person show. It's a two. It's a one person and one cosmic uh, entity uh, uh, show. Uh, but it's a two being show about saving the universe. Um, it's low budget, but it doesn't show. There's a lot of uh, ingenuity used. It's essentially a one location um, uh, movie, um, but it's used so well. Um, and, and the script by uh, by um, her her husband. Uh, David Ian David Ian. Andrew, yeah. and uh, Joshua Hull is uh, really clever. And uh, there's just some great um, ideological ideas, uh, some heady ideas thrown around in this uh, kind of grotesque environment as, you know, some interlopers come in, etc. You have to have some um, measure of violence and uh, over the top gore, as I know, uh, Rebecca McKendry is quite fond of uh, cosmic horror and goopy horror. And uh, I'm glad that she got the chance to uh, do this movie because she does a wonderful uh, uh, job with it. It's uh, just quite simply, it's, it's, a, it's an entertaining uh, kind of mind Lovecraftian trip that's just it just it leaves you with a smile on your face uh and it's and it's quite clever and 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 it's a lot of fun so yeah that's on shutter uh for those who haven't seen it i know it's been out for a couple few weeks uh already and uh has gotten a lot of praise and you can just uh, add me to that pile it's it's very entertaining yeah she's uh an excellent director and um you know uh, loved all the creatures were stirring um, 
I knew this was coming out, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And it's just been great to kind of see her dive more and more into this because she's such a, um, a, a scholar of the genre, right? And so if anybody can, um, and, and her husband as well, if anybody can, you know, do a great job with like subverting expectations or, you know, giving people something new um, who have kind of seen everything, um, then it's certainly uh, certainly her and uh, and David. So yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see it. Um, I haven't had a chance to yet. I, I love Ryan Quantin. Um, big fan of him from the the True Blood days, and uh, and so yeah. So this is hey, a- that's that's where he's from. Yeah, he's he's. I couldn't I couldn't pin where where he was from. Uh, but yeah, he's really good in this. Yeah, True Blood was. I mean, it it, it was great. I mean, we we loved it at the start. Um, obviously, it uh, like I said, it kind of changed hands as the show went on. But those first seasons were were a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. It's, um, funny because we recently launched a, um, recently launched a a Twitch channel. So if you haven't seen our our details, you can, uh, it's, uh, twitch.com slash daily dead Twitch. And, uh, Brian Christopher is heading that one up. And, uh, last week, it feels like it was last week. I think it was last week, (laughs) uh, in this time warp of the pandemic. Um, but, uh, he did a house watch party. It was kind of like, so it was like commentary as, as everybody's watching along with uh, Kay from Salem Horror Fest. And they were talking together about the film, but they also kind of got into Glorious and had this conversation about glory hole horror being its own new subgenre. So if you want their thoughts on that, uh, make sure to, uh, to hit up our Twitch channel or hit up uh, Kay's uh, Twitter account because she has a, a clip from it on there. But that was a lot of fun. Yes, I added in. I was getting home from work as they were uh, uh, wrapping up, so I was really catching it on on Kay's uh, Twitter. But I added in. No, I added it to Brian's. But I added in um, Scream Two, Omar Epps in the bathroom. Now, I mean, it's not technically a glory hole before, but it's certainly a glory hole after. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, technicalities work. So it was, we kind of left that up to, uh, Brian was okay with that. Uh, and Kay was a little, she was a little more uncertain on it, but she went along with it begrudgingly, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that argument would held up. And then there's also the scary movie version of it, which is definitely, I think would qualify as a glory hole. It uh, most but... <laughs> certainly does. Yes. <laughs> which, um, I saw that movie, a very young age and did not fully understand what was happening in certain moments. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I love the uh, like the contained story when they have like, you know, just two characters in a, in a small room or a bathroom stall. Like I love that movie um, stalled where it's like a a Christmas zombie movie with a a janitor stuck in a, in a bathroom. So I think bathroom just lends itself uh, so nicely to horror. So I think, when you add in cosmic horror, that sounds like a very good time. So, well, the, this this makes use of, and again, you know, it's it's a it's a tribute to everyone involved, the set designers and and special effects and and cinematography and everything. But uh, you know, it, it's essentially a box, right? It's a box with a couple urinals <laughs> and a, and like two stalls, right? But it's and over ninety minutes, but it's used, you know, it's used very well and. What if what I was the most surprised by was just hearing everyone's reaction uh, to it or not everyone's, but some people's reaction to it uh, about like how disgusting it is or whatnot. So I was expecting I was expecting like a lot of, I don't know, like cosmic gooey like penis humor you know, like gross out penis humor because of the glory hole. But there's actually like one, (laughs) there's like one glory hole joke or maybe two. It's just simply a communication device between uh, uh, Gott, uh, played by J.K. Simmons and and Wes, our our hero. It's, uh, (laughs) it's, It's fun. It's fun. That's it. Yeah. Cause I was kind of wondering that from, from knowing what I knew about it, like, is this going to be full on like gross out body horror? Cause there's a couple different ways you can no, go. There's, about I it, mean, there's, but... 
there's there's a there's a couple you know gross out like set pieces mm-hmm. designed uh you know but, but but again not like not going for like guinea pig levels of like realism right it's like clearly it's elevated like lovecraftian you know type uh, uh atmosphere that that she's going for because she knows it so well like inside and out right like she knows mm-hmm. exactly uh you know the kind of of um aesthetic and feeling that she wants to get across with this movie and and she nails it really well and that's nice. great yeah i will have to check it out there's a high likelihood i will see it uh, within the next week so um all right kind i of want shot a full report you, and you will get one all right <laughs> and so derek i'll t- turn it over to you because i know that you were at popcorn frights film festival i know you've been very busy with the popcorn frights film festival um, but i will let you tell our listeners all about it and, and your uh you know your your part that you played in it yeah i was i just got back i was very fortunate to be invited to be on the uh, film jury uh, for the second time. I, w- I had the the great pleasure of doing that back in 2019. And Mark and Igor, the co-founders of Popcorn Frights, which is now in its it was in its eighth year this year, uh, they they invited me back, and I got to uh, serve alongside Nathan M. Rose, uh, the CEO of the website FlickDirect, and Erin Dalton, who she is a a filmmaker from Florida. She uh, directed the movie The Gravedigger, which is coming out soon on VOD. And uh, she also has a couple of exciting projects coming up. She's doing a anthology segment with, with Adrian Barbeau, and she has another uh, feature that she'll be directing soon. So it was just really an honor to uh, to serve alongside those, those two amazing uh, people in the film community and uh, just go down to South Florida and watch a bunch of movies because, uh, you know, being on the jury, you get to watch like uh, all the feature films, all of the short films. And this About year, how many movies were... was that? Yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, well, it was a lot. This year, there was like over 30 feature films. I believe there was uh, over 70 short films. Uh, so it's it's a lot of amazing content. And it's the biggest festival they've ever had. Like it's grown every single year and it's, it's really amazing. The, the platform that Mark and Igor and and their amazing team give to the filmmakers that have their work submitted, uh, not just the features, but the short films too, because a lot of these filmmakers, they're up and coming. Maybe it's their, you know, they're trying to get a feature made. Maybe their short film is something that they want to make into a feature film. But they, the amount of short films that they showcase and really give a platform to is, is really cool, um, especially this year because they did a hybrid festival where you could, like half of the films were, were virtual and you could do feature films and short films. And then like another half were like in theater and some of them were both. Um, so it was really cool. And we, we got to go down to Miami Beach and um, the website Alter, which a lot of people may know as this uh, short film website uh, that, that highlights and distributes uh, short films, they kind of sponsored the weekend down there. And it was uh, really cool to just see like all these filmmakers that directed these short films come down and not only got a chance to uh, show their short film, but also do like different panels and talk in front of of the crowd and do Q and A's and talk about uh, the process of making a short film. And uh, Sophie and Shannon from Alter, uh, they hosted a panel about how best to go about making your short film and marketing it and really getting it out there. And so it was it was much, as much a celebration of the finished product as it was the passion and the and the drive and and just the nuts and bolts of actually making um, a short film. So it really, it really was interesting to, to see that much interaction and everything. So. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, well, I'm very familiar with Alter and I, well, I know you are Derek as well, because we cover a lot of shorts that, that make their way um, online through that platform. So um, I think that's pretty cool. And then we did, then Christy and Brian and I did, there was like an alter like horror trivia we did, which we had a lot of fun with. Um, yes. And that was really cool. So that team uh, seems to be really good at kind of, uh, you know, raising uh, new voices. And, you know, I mean, 
it, it's kind of interesting because it seems like, you know, like short films don't get the same respect as, as features, but it is a, um, it is an art of its own. Obviously you have, you know, even if you have the biggest budget in the world, you still may be restrained by time. Um, like I said, to keep it, uh, within, uh, within whatever, or ever time limit, uh, either the festival wants or you have in mind. Um, and for, for new filmmakers, it's a great way to kind of cut your teeth, learn the process, have a smaller budget because, you know, it's okay to, to make mistakes, to stumble. If you're working your way through a short, then maybe if you have a, if, if you decide to commit to a feature and then going back to what, um, you know, we're talking about, uh, Rebecca McKendry. I mean, she started out with a handful of shorts. So uh, I think she did at least uh, three or four of them, at least, um, kind of working her way up to doing features. So um, it's nice to see them uh, have a platform like that. And then also for you, it's interesting because uh, in terms of watching all of this, like it's it's crazy because like if I go to a festival, like I could skip out on a movie if I'm tired. <laughs> you got to watch them all. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to uh, you have to pace yourself. But then at the same time, you just. You're like, you know, I can sleep another day. And, at, and you know, the, the great thing too, kind of like, you know, like Overlook, how there's, there's the screenings, but there's also other things going on, like Popcorn Frights. You get a chance to, like, we got to go to the beach uh, one day and hang out with, with the filmmakers and just spend time with these people and, and go to, um, like, we actually had a, an Alter Fangoria a trivia night as well. So we got to do that. Oh, that's and, great. What did, how did you do? And what was what was the team? I want to know. I'm, I'm trivia obsessed. I'm living vicariously through you. So, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, I was on a team with uh, Aaron Dalton, uh, my fellow judge, and also Willie and Jason, who um, who are also friends of ours from from Popcorn Frights. And I got to know Willie uh at, at back in 2019 so it was great to see all of them again and it was hosted by like angel from fangoria um sophie from alter and then a uh, special guest andre gower from uh the star of the monster squad oh, nice was on hand as well so he was uh there all weekend he hosted the trivia and uh we our, our team uh which uh our team name was uh fittingly wolfman's nards there you uh, go we we uh we took we tied for first place um against a one person team uh, uh a guy named Steve who is also very good at trivia nice. and so we went into like a triple overtime and it ended up being a question about motel hell and the, it was it was kind of a two tiered question first it was like who's the main actor and i knew i was kicking myself cuz i just watched motel hell like 3 months ago Rory Calhoun <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. See, Scott, there you go. And I, yeah. I knew he was a guy who was in a bunch of Westerns, but we couldn't remember his name. What so then the Andre, Andre said, okay, well, what's the catchphrase of the movie? And I'm like, I know this, I know this because I, you know, I just seen it. And I said, it takes all kinds of fritters to make Vincent's Farmer, fritters. Farmer Vince, all Vince kinds fritters. of critters to make. It takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's, Vincent's fritters. Yeah. And so I got all of that except for the farmer line. I could not for the uh, life of me remember yeah. that part of it. It felt like I was on a karaoke like game show. Yeah. And and then it went to like another round of overtime. And it was um, the question was, when is the first Friday the 13th movie that Freddy's claw hand appears? And and Steve uh, beat us to the punch on that one. Yeah, it's uh, and, and Jason it. goes to hell, right? Yeah. You are correct, yep. but also the final Friday in there as well. If you really want to be specific, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I, I would have been specific at that trivia. <laughs> so we we so we got but, second yeah. place, and it was uh it was a lot of fun. Nice, um, well, that's great. And uh, and you need to phone a friend next time, Colin Scott. Absolutely, yeah. I was trying to telepathically yeah. tap into Scott's subconscious because. Yeah, you know, you like to send encyclopedia of horror knowledge, and yeah, you. I, I didn't have any decom sure. questions, so <laughs> they only call me for specific things like Vincent Price movies, Hammer movies, Junji Ito. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take mm -hmm. that. Um, so uh, back to popcorn frights. Um, you saw a lot of movies. What are yes. some of the movies that we should be keeping an eye out for? Okay, definitely. Yeah, it's it's tough to narrow it down, but some standouts for me. 
Uh, one that I just saw kind of early on and, and, and really enjoyed was called The Loneliest Boy in the World, which I believe is coming out from WellGo USA uh, fairly soon. And it's kind of like a very Tim Burton-y type movie where this boy who kind of lives on his own, his mom died in this kind of horrific accident that is was very improbable. Uh, he's trying, it's kind of like a coming of age tale and essentially through a series of misunderstandings and, and everything, he ends up like digging up a few corpses and like making his own family out of these dead people. And then they kind of come to life and teach him about how to like come out of his shell and, and interact with the community. And so that he doesn't get sent to an asylum. I like that but a lot. It, yeah. I mean, even though it's not happy, I like it a lot. <laughs> it's, and he's, it's kind of fun. It's like an 80s setting. He's obsessed with the show Alf. Um, his whole house is like pink. It's a very, it's a very whimsical yet kind of. Uh, the rooms know, are just, lined with, with, <laughs> with steel and he has a flamethrower in there and that's where he burns all the women alive. That's just the, this is like one left turn from that, like set up already. So I think, yeah, it's, in. yeah, yeah. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, a, on a very different note, one that is um, not as charming, but very effective was the movie Swallowed, uh, which is written and directed by Carter Smith, who directed The Runes. Yeah, I've heard good things okay. about that one. It's nice okay. to see him back because I yeah. love The Ruins. Yeah, yeah, same. This one will get under your skin. It is, it's very, it, it's, it's very effective in its approach to the horror. It's very plausible, even as like, even though the the kind of the plot device is a little bit out there, that it's a very like plausible story, just getting in over your head, um, in kind of like this drug smuggling scenario gone horribly, horribly wrong. And I will say uh, Jenna Malone is fantastic, but Mark Patton just steals the show and has such a great juicy role in this movie. I'm so, so glad that he like got a role like this because I think we've been waiting for a really long time for him to get something like this. And uh, he really goes for it. That's great. Yeah, I had I uh, missed it at Overlook. I missed a lot of movies at Overlook, <laughs> but I wanted to see this one, and uh, I will yeah, be seeing. I, it I too, I too missed it at Overlook. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. That's, that's totally. a true statement. <laughs> but you know, it it will. Ho I don't think it has distribution yet at the time of this recording. But I feel like it. Uh, if it gets the right home, I think it'll get the audience that it deserves mm -hmm. and. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long, Scott. So that's one I would definitely keep our, your eye out for. Another one, uh, a movie called Follow Her, uh, directed by Sylvia uh, Kaminer and written by the movie's star, Danny Barker. Uh, this one is like really a great self-aware kind of socially relevant horror movie. Very much to do about um, kind of like uh, this woman who she wants to be an actress, but right now she's kind of answering all these classified ads, kind of like Craigslist style and going and, and putting herself in, in some situations with strangers where she's trying to get, trying to get viral, but it's also kind of a dangerous thing. She's meeting with these strangers and, and there's sometimes things get a little weird. And so she never really knows what's going to happen at any given uh, situation, but she, one of the ads that she answers in this movie uh, just kind of takes a really dark turn. Um, and then nothing really as, is as it seems. I, I, don't, I can't really get into it, but there's a, some just amazing, like just when you think you know where it's going, it, it takes a total left turn. And uh, it's a very, the way they inter interact with the uh, social media in the movie is is really cool. And uh, I think it's, it's a very immersively kind of socially relevant movie. So, uh, but some just amazing performances in that. And it's, it was uh, the director's like first narrative feature. So I could not believe that how confidently made it was that that was their first like feature uh, film. So definitely keep an eye out for that one. No, yeah, well, that's, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm so happy that you were able to uh, be a juror again. It's always, uh, you know, it's a great honor. And it's also, you know, for people who are like, oh, like, like I could do that. I mean, yes, maybe uh, listeners, you could, but it is like it is work. It is not just uh, going to a festival and having fun. Um, it also requires you to watch a, a significant amount of movies and be, you know, 100 percent focused and 
Um, and, and you have to pick some winners, which we'll, we'll hear about those pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Should be right around the corner. So, uh, there's going to be six different categories, uh, incorporating like feature films and short films. There's even a category for best Florida short film, uh, supporting the filmmaking community down there. So there's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I would definitely uh, say, just keep your eyes out for, uh, for the announcements and stay tuned. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds like you're a correspondent i love it i mean in, in, in this case you kind of are but it's like it's almost like we're about to like cut away because i can see you you know so it's like <laughs> right yeah I'm, I'm like a news reporter and, and back like to you to scott see. yes <laughs> well you and scott you'd be the news anchors right you'd be yeah exactly thanks, <laughs> yeah thanks derek yeah it's scott and i, I mean you i don't leave the house really that often so you are kind of like our, our correspondent <laughs> And now the weather. How's the world outside, Derek? How are people? It's, it's good. It's um yeah, it's it's still out there as civilization is believe it or not is still going to some extent. So um yeah, it's it's a new normal, but we're it's we're not in total like uh post apocalypse mode, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm very, and I, this sounds sarcastic, but I really am very happy for you. <laughs> I know when I say things like this, it sounds sarcastic, but it's not, I promise. Um, so yeah, so it's, 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 to, it's me, it's my turn. Um, I haven't been going out as much, uh, so I missed a couple movies. Uh, we have a sick pup at home and he's a priority. So, um, and it takes a little bit to drive to our drive-in. So I haven't seen Nope yet but I will see Nope by the time you've listened to this episode. I was thinking like by the time the episode airs, but not really, because that'll be like Thursday night, Friday morning. And I'm like, if I don't listen to it till next year. Yeah. I'm like, you you have to wait a little bit. Listeners like at this point, like pause it and give me a, give me six hours. By the time you've listened to this, I have seen Nope. Um, But uh, what I have been doing is I have been catching up on my TV shows and on Netflix. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There is, you know, obviously, I don't know. Th- there's a lot of streaming drama these days. I think that's accurate to say, <laughs> whether it's Netflix or whether it's HBO Max and or, or others. And it's like, but uh, there are some some good things to highlight and i think sandman and resident evil are are two big ones worth calling out i would say that resident evil kind of slipped through the cracks because resident evil came out around the same time that um kind of around the same time that uh stranger things uh season four volume two came out so that's what got all the attention but Resident Evil is really, really solid. Like, I know some people, yeah, I can see Derek at your face. You're like, really? Yeah, but I know because, like, <laughs> the the feedback that, you know, if you look at, like, the Rotten Tomato scores or you look at, like, the IMDb ratings, even, like, on social, like, a lot of people haven't been liking it. And I'm going to say, if you like playing the Resident Evil video games, if you've been playing them since the beginning, you've been playing the new ones, check out the show. Maybe it's not for you. But don't write it off. For me, this is like probably the closest to adapting the video game like franchise. Because you have to remember, kind of like Godzilla, everybody has their favorite. And Godzilla is different in his first appearance than he is when he's like boxing and jumping around. Maybe that one's your favorite Godzilla. And so the Resident Evil franchise has something very similar. Do you love Resident Evil 1 or is 4 your favorite? Do you like more action oriented or do you like the scares? Is your first introduction to Resident Evil, the original movie series and Alice, is that your Resident Evil, right? So that's kind of what you have to deal with if you're going to um, gonna adapt. And they have um, Andrew Dabb who ad- adapted this and he's worked on Supernatural. And he took a really smart approach of not really being beholden to the uh, video games or the movies, but being in the spirit of it. And so we have like, I don't remember the dates, um, but there's like, it's like today or like around now because they reference COVID. And then there's like 20 years in the future. And the story follows these characters and it goes back to when they're younger and it goes back to when they're older. And, um, and 
I think it does a really great job of of mixing, you know, some things that we know. It has like, uh, you know, the it has your traditional zombies, but it has these like crazy creatures that you would see if you play the video games. It has tons of Easter eggs. So like things that Derek, like you'd recognize, like if you played, I can't remember if you played four, but there's like Easter eggs from four. There's Easter eggs certainly from like Resident Evil seven. And so you can kind of see where they weave this stuff in without it being like winking at the, um, the audience. I think one of the big things that they smartly did was uh, Lance Reddick, who you've, um, you know, he, he's, he's all over the place. You know, a lot of people probably these days would recognize him from like the last John Wick. Um, but he plays uh, Wesker in the show, which is like on paper, it like doesn't make sense because, you know, Wesker's at least, you know, as we've seen in the previous movie and some of these video games is kind of like a Neo type, like, like buff dude seems like a little cocky. And you see um, Wesker is played by this really reserved Lance Reddick, who's a scientist um, at the, at, at, you know, when we see him in, in the beginning of the show. And so it's like, well, what's going on here? And I can imagine, again, people being like, this isn't my Resident Evil. And uh, to which I say, just stay along for the ride. Hopefully it's something that you enjoy because they do some really, really fun things with it. Um, so, yeah. So, Derek, uh, I think this would definitely be a good show for you. Interesting. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned it because honestly, with as much going on this summer and as much stuff that's been coming out, and like you mentioned, Stranger Things, uh, there's, I kind of like forgot about it, even though I'm a really big Resident Evil fan, uh, especially, I've, you know, having watched like all the live action movies and played, uh, most of the video games, or at least, you know, half of the video games, uh, that this is something that I really want to take the time to watch at some point. And it was something like, I feel like it was, I feel like at first the reaction online was kind of divisive, but I feel like the more time that's gone by, it seems like overall it's been a more positive reaction that i've seen to it uh so and i'm hoping uh do you think this is something that will continue like in another season or is it more like a limited series like self-contained uh kind of show yeah i mean i can answer that i mean some people may consider it spoilery but i won't mention anything that happens in the story itself um i would say it definitely leaves it well open for a second season so it's not very well self-contained and and i hope that you know and, and with the financial um issues that kind of netflix has run into and maybe they're changing strategy i worry that this is something that may may not continue um i'm hoping that another streaming network may be able to pick it up because i think it's really strong and i also think that the, a lot of the feedback in the beginning um, not all of the feedback, but I think a lot of it was the same kind of things, you know, when we saw when Star Wars was, you know, Force Awakens was there or like you can't have a, a black stormtrooper and it's like you can't have a, a black Wesker. And it's just unfortunately, those voices are so loud and so toxic that it, it's it, it, I think this is one of those shows that um that those voices just kind of drowned out a lot of the praise at the start. And because I, you know, there was like review bombing and things like that, which I just think is super unfortunate um, because I, I think for anybody who really takes the time to watch what they put together, even if you don't love every episode, or even if you're like, Hey, this wasn't exactly what I wanted. Like, just imagine like, um, you know, the people who are making this and they're clearly fans of the series because you can see what they put into this. And I mean, and, and to be honest, I think it feels more like the Resident Evil video game. I mean, than, than anything they did in the movies. And I mean, you could say, well, that's obvious, but I mean, like they tried to introduce a lot of the main characters to the movie series. They tried to reboot it with the welcome to raccoon city. And that one didn't work, but this does a great job of setting up umbrella as like, they're almost like a, an evil er Amazon. <laughs> and so it's like, what, ha what would happen if like Amazon was like more powerful and like they were in the middle of COVID and like they were kind of controlling what happens with the pandemic and, um, and, and, and not exactly that, but it's just, you know, it's kind of interesting to see how they play with that, where the thing, the scenarios that they lay out, I'm like, oh, this could kind of happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think they do a good job of kind of making, I don't, even, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say it's humanizing umbrella, but it's making it more of an actual 
more of an actual, I don't know, villain or corporation, right? You can see what it actually does. Whereas I think it's a little more hidden, even in the video games, it's, it's a little more in the shadows. Interesting. And would you say that, so this is more, more like horror centric, more atmosphere as opposed to like the action horror of the Alice movies. Like this is a little more restrained or do they also get a little, do they like let their hair down a little bit at times and go full on like Alice action at, at, at certain points? I think split the difference somewhere okay. between like somewhere between, between like resident evil one and the, you know, the video game and the resident evil Alice movies. It's like, it's not full on horror. It's not slow mo matrix style action. It's, I think it's more, it's, it's, it seems to be it, it, a lot of it's sci fi, you know, because it is. I mean, and then so is, so is Resident Evil, if you think about it. I mean, it's based, it's, it's science based. It's a lot of horror, but it's a lot of body horror, but it's based on, you know, these mutations. It's based on these creatures that have been mutated. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, I really liked it. Uh, I think the scale's great. Um, my only complaint is that I don't know. They haven't announced season two yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I think this one that's, that uh, kind of went under the radar uh, and one of my favorite things I've watched so far. So, um, wow. and, and again, and I know there are people that are going to listen to this and be like, no, this is totally not for me. And there's uh, uh, tons of people and that's okay. If you didn't like it and you didn't, you saw it and you didn't enjoy it, like, uh, like that's fine. But, uh, but for, for people who haven't, because they, they've heard some negative reaction, I do urge you to give it a try. And then the um, other show that I saw was The Sandman, which is uh, which is really really cool. Um, I'm definitely a Sandman kid because growing up, I was was reading it. Um, you know, I mean, there's like some definitive, like you can point to a handful of graphic novels or comic book series that like changed the way that comic books are perceived and the stories that can be told through that. Because even now it has the stigma of, Oh, like comic books are for kids, but um, that's not with everybody. And, you know, uh, this, you know, Sandman, Watchmen, you know, things like V for Vendetta, Dark Knight Returns, like those, those kind of changed the game in the, uh, in the late eighties, early nineties. And, uh, and Sandman, kind of like Watchmen, was considered one of those like unfilmable things. And there's been like tons of different attempts to get Sandman to the big screen. Like Derek, we've we've covered some things. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was going to be a part of it uh, at one point. He he had interest, and there were others that have wanted to do it. And um, it finally kind of landed as a a TV series at Netflix because Netflix is kind of they're still trying to find what they're like big thing. And I've heard them say it. They're, they want to find their Star Wars or their Harry Potter. Certainly, Stranger Things is one of those things, but they want more, you know. Um, and so maybe like Sandman is, uh, you know, they thought might be it for them. Sandman's interesting, though. Um, you know, my my sister and her husband watched it and they're like, no, like well, they tuned out after the first episode. Christy and I are watching and we're like, oh, we love this so much. It's very slow. Um, it's not it's it's a drama it's it's a it's a drama it's like i don't know it's like edgar Allan poe you know what i'd explain to people it's like it's edgar Allan poe meets harry potter you know and, and obviously this this <laughs> predates harry potter um but it's this you know being it's 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 morpheus he controls dreams and uh and it's dealing with and if you've read anything from from uh neil gaiman if you've seen what he's done with kind of lucifer he loves you know working with these like the, the, like these myths, you know, whether it's Norse gods or whether it's gods he's created, you know, kind of for the DC universe. And, uh, and it kind of deals with, uh, with that. And wh how does uh, a being like this who kind of controls dreams or this dream world, how does he interact with humanity and how does he interact with his siblings? And, um, and so the TV series is 10 episodes. It adapts the first uh, some of the first comics and it does it in pretty smart ways. Um, but before I keep going, have, have you guys read, uh, read any of the comics? Are you familiar with it at all? I'll get my no out of the way first and then Derek, you can go. Oh, thank you, Scott. Uh, I also have not. It's okay. But, I, I put both of yeah. you in the hot seat and that's fine. Yep. 
Um, I know I, it's one of those I like because I love Watchmen as a comic. So I, I, when you're listing off those essential reads, it's it is something that's kind of like a classic literature where you have like that list where you're like, oh, I want to read this before I die. That's definitely, up, you know, one of those that I want to read at some point. Yeah, it's about 75 issues and you can do comiXology. I think it's like a lot of the issues are free as part of their service or like you can download like the collections and they reprinted um the comics as well because they knew the they knew the tv show was going to come out so there's like um there's a couple there's a few volumes you could get as well um but yeah and, and neil gaiman's involved with it um so that's helpful the cast is great um and uh and i really love the, the the story i mean the the story the comic book in some ways will break narrative structure i mean it it, it it definitely does. But when you try to adapt it to the TV series, it definitely breaks narrative structure. So there's like, when you see them adapted, they do a great job of doing it and making that interesting, but it's, it can be jarring. So that's why I, I say it's like, it's interesting that they, they pulled this off. And for me, it was like fascinating to see them do um, what they did with some of these episodes. I don't want to give, I'm trying not to, to spoil anything. Um, but they definitely break that that narrative structure we're kind of used to seeing um, with, with how to kind of carry a story of this nature. They're not, I think they're, they knew they had a built in audience and they were more interested in, in faithfully telling the story than telling something that felt like everything else we've seen. So um, yeah, there's 10 episodes and they released a bonus episode that they, that came out a little bit like last week. Um and so this is another another good one. I could just talk. You could just hear, and you're like, he could just talk for an hour about the Sandman, Resident Evil, and I could. Um, but yeah, it's this is all to say, check them both out. They're good. And I would imagine that this will probably get renewed because it is so like Netflix. Is, it seems like they put a lot of time and energy into this. And I know it's been a long time coming, so I'm hope like, or is it more, or is this a limited series kind of thing where they're like, let's wrap it up just in case. No, it's Warren, but it's a Warner Brothers thing. So shrug emoji as I'm doing it on the screen, like <laughs> <laughs> Scott's dying over there. Back up the servers. Um, yeah, but like I don't know. I don't. We're in. We're in. We're in the Wild West. I don't know what's happening anymore. Uh, it's like I don't. Um, you know, I I really I really don't know. And I, I you got to keep your you got to keep your movie between your matches. Yeah, and I want to and I and too, I don't <laughs> want to speculate too much. It's just we're in a streaming is definitely in a flux, and so I guess the 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 nicest way I can say it is like w nobody knows what's going to happen really with this stuff because I guess the thing too is like now I'm going to talk about it for for HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Uh, for HBO Max, the goal was to shave uh, the budget. So a lot of these things were done to to kind of get their expenses down. But because of all the negative press, their stock's taken a huge hit. And so they lost all that savings anyway. And they just kind of stayed where they were at. And of course, that's kind of like what the optics are right now. And so that that's really, you know, oversimplification. I get that for people who want to be picky about it. Um, but I think what all of this means is, is that there's new leadership that's in charge of, of Warner Brothers Discovery. They don't, it doesn't seem like they know exactly what they're going to do. And even if they do have a plan that they want to follow, the market and the reaction may have them switch course. So, you know, if things were more stable, if Netflix was a little bit more stable with its subscriber base, um, and Warner Brothers would be like, yeah, of course this one's going to get done. But in a scenario where both of these streaming giants are pulling back on their budgets, uh, yeah, I, I hope this one continues to do well. I'd love to see more of it. I'd love to see more Resident Evil, but I think Resident Evil is the less likely one. If I had to bet, I'd say we'll get more Sandman and we won't get more Resident Evil. But Ooh. that doesn't mean that someone else can't pick it up. So, you know, Hulu or, or if somebody else wants to pick up Resident Evil, they could. And Lucifer, right? Lucifer, the the show that's based on a character that's from the Sandman universe, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, in a way, it's like within the DC universe, and is more based on like Lucifer coming to spend time on Earth, and 
it it is as far as I rec- recall, it is the, technically the same character. But w- what will be jarring for like viewers who are used to the Lucifer TV show is that even though it might sort of be the same character, those two characters don't really gel. Okay, like between the Lucifer you see in in, in Sandman, the Lucifer that you see, it's, and certainly not the same actors. Gotcha. Yeah, two like two different ad- adaptations. Of yeah, a character. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, that, yeah. And I suppose, yeah, I remember that was kind of like the crow where for the longest time we were covering news about the Sandman and what might happen as a movie or a TV show. So maybe the fact that it took so long to make was actually a good thing because now they have, I'm sure what the, even the stuff they can do now versus like 10 years ago is uh, a lot different. And maybe that, you know, maybe the wait was worth it. It sounds like it at least is something that people can watch it might not be for everybody but at least it sounds like people who are fans of the comic book series are will be uh, happy with the show for the most part yeah yeah i mean i think that some people are used to and this is becoming an age thing as well though but like there's like a certain narrative structure that we're kind of used to seeing now with comic book movies and with comic book tv shows sandman doesn't follow that so if you're someone who's kind of coming in expecting that you're going to get something different and something much slower. But if you're someone who's watched Penny Dreadful and you like that, like actually this is kind of closer to Penny Dreadful than it is like another like uh, DC show. Interesting. Okay. That kind of vibe to it. Yeah. That kind of pacing okay. um, for, for sure. Penny Dreadful is also great. Yeah. Another one that ended very abruptly, but oh, it was uh, it was such a good way to do it, though, in retrospect, like instead Scott, of going like nine ha, seasons. Have and... you seen it, Scott? <laughs> no, we I saw watched. I saw part of the first season. That's it. Ah, well, yeah. as yeah, it's no surprise. I won't won't spoil anything. But by the, the last season, the last episode of the last season, nobody knew it was the last season until they were like the end. Thank you for for like supporting us over the years. <laughs> <laughs> and um and some storylines came to definitive ends and uh it was like oh okay <laughs> and um but at the same time like certain you know actors contracts were probably coming up it was time to renew and it was like well do i want to do half the cast or do we want to you know make the best version of this possible i really liked it that's the thing with, with tv shows too is you get to that third or fourth year and then it's like those contracts they start to expire and then it's like every you know the money you know, has to get bigger at, in a lot of cases. And it's kind of like a sports team, right? Where you have like a, a really good sports team for three or four years, but then like everyone kind of goes their separate ways because they can get better deals elsewhere, or maybe it just costs too much to keep everybody together for like another round. So it's almost like sometimes it makes you wonder, well, maybe, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not saying like every show needs to end, you know, cause I get frustrated sometimes when like a show won't go past three seasons uh, because that's like the formula, you know, so it's uh, it is interesting, though, that like that's kind of, you know, sometimes I guess you got to just anticipate that and go with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm... where, like, where's the hell are season four of uh, Santa Clarita diet? Huh? Right. Where's that season four? Just a wrap up movie, uh, right? Just a wrap up movie. Yeah, that's what something. I want. Just yeah. a wrap up movie. Yeah. Um, And wrapping us up here. See Glorious because Scott says it's great. And um, Derek turned us on to some few, a few movies, more than a few movies at uh, Popcorn Frights. He's going to have his event wrap up. Um, and I know you'll be posting about the uh, the winners and all that as well. And then uh, for me, watch uh, watch uh, The Sandman, watch Resident Evil. Hope you like it. And then just a reminder that we have a new Twitch channel. It's Daily Dead Twitch. Um, uh, Brian has a Hellraiser Razor. So I do want to talk about that for a minute. I make sure I got my dates right. It is the 9th, the 10th, the 16th, and the 17th of September. And uh, so what Brian is going to be doing is he's going to be um, streaming all of the Hellraiser movies, uh, on his end anyway. But it's going to be a watch party. So hopefully you have all of the Hellraiser movies. If not, um, we'll include some links on on where they're, uh, they're available and streaming. Yeah, I'm doing one of these. Yes, yeah, so I think we all are. So we're, uh, <laughs> along with some other uh, special guests... Yeah. We will be tackling different Hellraiser movies, but Brian is going to be subjected to all of them. He, they're going to be mixed up. I was talking to him about it. And I'm like, we can't have, we can't put people through like 
debtor and hell seeker like as one one night because they're just it's not going to work. Um, so it, so he's mixing it up, and uh, so that you get a little bit of the uh, heaven and hell, if you will, and um, and he's raising money for a good cause. Um, he's going to have also some some fun things involved if you uh, hit certain donation tiers. And uh, you can go to dailydead.com to learn all about it. Or as I mentioned, you can go to uh, twitch.com slash dailydeadtwitch to uh, follow the account. And, uh, and hopefully you can join us for one or all of those, those days. Uh, which, Scott, uh, which, movies, which movie did you get? I was going to say, I got Hellworld and I didn't get it. I picked it. <laughs> you picked it? Oh, I good. picked he, it. I he love... gave me Deader. I, don't, yeah. I think because I haven't seen Deader, I think is uh, the one I haven't seen. And what do you got, uh, Derek? I've yeah. got Hellseeker. Ooh, yeah, I named both of them. I didn't know you guys had those. Um, Is he saving the good movies for people he likes? <laughs> I, I, and like I said, I opted for uh, for Hellworld. It's um, it's been a little bit since I watched it, but it has Henry Cavill, it has Kari Payton, it has Lance Henriksen. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I got that one. Oh, oh yeah, I watched that one not too long ago. I like that. One. Yeah, yeah, that one's gonna be fun. So uh, I'll be be doing that on the uh, the second weekend. But yeah, but uh, for our listeners, uh, we encourage you to uh, to join in on the fun. Uh, we are recording them, so you can join in after the fact. But uh, but anything you can uh, donate would be great. Um, and uh, and yeah, this episode has come to an end. We want to thank Brian, our engineer, for helping us out each and every episode. We also want to thank our listeners, including those of you who have signed up for a Corpse Club membership. Uh, at CorpseClub.com, we have all of the latest episodes. You can also sign up to be a member. We have a Corpse Club t-shirt. We have a pin. We have a membership card. We have an episode topic. You want to hear us dedicate an episode to our thoughts about the current streaming landscape? We can do it. Especially Jonathan's. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all the opinions. I have all the opinions, and then also, yeah, and we might have. Uh, I'm, I'm dropping. I'm dropping uh, hints. We might have a new Daily Dead slash Corpse Club T-shirt design. I don't know, but we might have one before the end of the year. So that would be uh, that would be something to keep an eye out for. Uh, what else? Don't rate. Don't forget to uh, not. Don't rate us. Don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcast. <laughs> Or don't rate us, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I promise I haven't had anything to drink but this water over here. Um, every rating and review does help. So if you haven't rated us, please, uh, it helps. Um, and you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and all of your favorite podcast providers. If you want to get in touch, you can reach out anytime. We are at contact at corpseclub.com. We're on Twitter. We're at Daily Dead News and at Corpse Club. And on Instagram and Facebook, we're under Corpse Club as well. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, stay scary. Mm-hmm.